Okay, part two of the Perfect Patio series. Today we're gonna look at some base prep. Really good base prep is the key to a really nice, flat, clean paving stone surface. Uh, that is gonna last a long time. Any kind of minor discrepancies in the base prep will show over time with a sand layer that might slowly settle out in some of those spots where the sand is thicker. So really important for us to nail this base prep. First, I'm gonna set up some stakes on the perimeter and kind of line them up with my slope. And I'm using laser levels to transfer some level lines all the way around. And from there, I can set up my strings and we can actually do a quick calculation on slope in a second as well. So I always like to set up patios so that it's sloping in one direction if possible. Obviously, sometimes you need to slope to a drain, so there will be multiple slopes. Um, but in this case, I tried to set it up so that the whole patio is sloping just one direction, about 1.5% uh, to the away from the house, away from the building. And that way, the whole patio is going to feel really flat, right? So it's definitely going to still have slope to pull water, but it's going to feel and look pretty flat when you're actually on it. So for a furniture, it's not going to rock or anything like that. And because I'm having more of a natural shape along the dry riverbed, I need to just set a stake kind of farther away, not in line with the other two. So I'm just going to use level across. So using the level parallel to the level lines. And that gives me a, a good sort of translation over to this stake that's a little farther away. So I'm just going to go over how I actually calculated that once again. So looking at our direction of slope for the main patio, I'm going to shoot my level lines onto the perimeter stakes. So shooting that benchmark height on all of the stakes on all four corners. And then I'm going to do a length calculation. I usually just keep it in inches to make it simple. So 168, let's say, times that by my percentage, so 1.5%. And then on the far perimeter lines, so the direction that I'm sloping to, the two on the right, I can simply measure down that amount and make marks and set up my strings to those heights. And that gives us a perfect percentage of slope on the surface. I always like to double check when I tie my strings that nothing is overlapping awkwardly. I think I looped this an extra time around. So just make sure that that's really, really precise, super important, and that they're all really tight that's why I use my uh, knot setup that I'm sure you've seen in some previous videos. And now I can use the strings. I'm not worrying about calculating heights or slopes anymore. I can just simply measure down from the strings to get my finished height for my first couple layers of road base, making sure that we're not adding more than about three or four inches at a time before we compact. And then we're gonna work our way up and compact it to, until we get to our finished height and then we're gonna screed it. For these first couple layers, it's really important to actually wet the road base down. Uh, it really helps sort of lubricate all the particles so it compacts really well. Um, always nice to keep the dust down as well if you're working in a really hot environment. So really important to overlap. I usually do about, let's say three quarters to a half overlap on each pass. And you have lots of time here, right? You're, you're probably moving along pretty fast at this point. The compaction definitely needs some time to actually work. Uh, so we wanna get as much force into the ground as possible. That's really what we're trying to achieve. Um, you can think of it as like, you're already settling the ground over time. So the more passes you take, sort of the more years of settling, it's gonna impact into the ground. So it's really helping create that really, really rock hard surface that's gonna last a long, long time. And there's a bunch of tests we can do to actually see if we reach the right compaction levels. I find the best way to go for myself is to actually get up on the balls of my feet and press down. And I can really feel and see if any of the gravel sort of displaces or moves under my feet. Um, and you can actually hear the compactor when it starts to get really hard. It'll sort of bounce a little bit more than um, previously where the vibration was sort of getting soaked into the ground. It'll bounce on the surface and start to sound a little bit different as well. So once we get to the final layer of road base, I'm actually gonna set up a screed board with the string lines and I'm just making a mark there, taking into account 
that this final layer is only about two inches thick. So it's only gonna compact about half an inch or so. And that will give me a good sense of where I need to put that line in relation to the thickness of the paper and the thickness of the sand on the surface that we're gonna put on after. So I'm just double checking. And with screening road base, um, this is sort of an extra step that a lot of companies I've noticed don't necessarily do. Uh, but I find that just a few extra minutes to do this really helps a lot in that final compaction layer to make it super flat. So we're not sort of just making it up with different thicknesses of sand later, any discrepancies. We're actually getting this layer super flat first. So kind of like mopping our way out if we're cleaning something. We're going to start from the far end, so the farthest point away from our gravel pile. And we're going to work back towards it, just adding a little bit at a time and raking it around. And then scraping it to that really precise height using my marks and the string lines. So taking your time, moving sort of back and forth, working one side and then the other, and really just pulling that board across the surface, trying not to dig in anywhere until the surface is really, really flat. And once again, at this point, the string lines are already set, right? So I'm not putting a level on this at any point. I'm really just using the string lines and trusting my previous work in the heights to get it to the correct slope. So now that the road base layer is screeded, we're gonna compact it really, really well and get ready to move on to the next phase of the project. So we're gonna rough in some material for the river rock details and we're gonna start to look at some screeding in preparation for laying papers. See you in part three.